All right. So welcome to accessibility and support for all students through using Quizlet. And I want to tell you a little bit about what my background is. I'm a classics instructor. I'm an academic technology coordinator, and I'm a language department chair at the Kingswood Oxford School in West Hartford, Connecticut. And um, if you want to reach out to me, if you have any ideas you want to share, or if you have any questions after the conference that you don't get a chance to ask, please feel free to reach out. I'm on Twitter. And that is also my email address. So please feel free to reach out. And so Quizlet, I found during, especially during virtual learning, has been my number one go-to tool, especially for accessibility. I think it's really easy for students to access Quizlet. I think students can understand how to use Quizlet very intuitively. And also students have a lot of opportunities to use Quizlet as a tool for growth. I think more than a lot of the other social media offerings out there, Quizlet offers a lot of benefits in terms of being able to differentiate instruction, be able to do a lot of different things with it, and also being able to have a lot of tools that will help with accessibility. And so we're going to review a bunch of those today. I'm going to go quickly over what this session is going to be about. We're going to start out by talking about differentiated instruction, followed by Quizlet as a feedback tool, reading accessibility support, visibility support, audit auditory support, Quizlet Live for increased student engagement, as well as additional accessibility features such as keyboard shortcuts, app features such as offline accessibility, and ad block options. So first we're going to talk about differentiated instruction. And the first thing to think about is when you think about differentiated instruction, we all learn differently. We're not going to acquire knowledge in the same way as someone else. And so it's very important to have options when we're thinking about, okay, some students will learn really well this way, some will learn what better this way. And so offering our students a lot of different options or what I do in my class, a lot of different Quizlet sets to help them reach their goals can be very, very helpful for instruction, especially with online learning. I find it is so easy to share Quizlets. And so let's talk a, few, a little bit about how we can use Quizlet for this. So first of all, it is very easy to share Quizlet, if, especially if you're a Google school, you can share it on Classroom, you can share it with a link, or you can send it to your student emails. I really also like that you can send it on Remind. I know that I often had students who had internet in and out, and sometimes they couldn't access their internet, sometimes for days at a time. And so I could use Remind to send them a link to a Quizlet that they could get on their phone which would be helpful to them if they couldn't access the internet another way. And so I found that to be a very useful tool and they, they have some offline accessibility there. So to differentiate instruction, we must give students the tools they need to learn and review. And so some students, you'll teach them something, they've got it the first time. That is so not always the case. So students need an opportunity to review, to go over material, and sometimes in different ways, sometimes at their own pace, sometimes they want kind of a competitive element. And I feel like Quizlet does a really good job with all of those options. And so the first thing we're going to talk about though is all the different things you can do with Quizlet. And this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but this is several options. You can do this, I'm a language teacher, so I use this for a topic or different texts. I will do several Quizlets for one text. Um, a lot of these are from either um, my unit on Greek mythology gods or my unit on Caesar, book one of De Bello Gallico. And so you can do definitions, translations, or descriptions of different things. That is one option for a set, using it more like traditional flashcards. You can use pictures and have students tell you what the different parts of the pictures are pertaining to the lesson, same lesson as before. Um, for the same lesson, you could have them look at a picture and label what things are in that picture, in this type of diagram picture. I use it for maps too. I think it's a really great tool for maps. And so here I've blocked out all the words and then you have the little circles there. And so it's really helpful to have students identify where things are using Quizlet. Again, doing something else with it. Another thing you can do with it is fill in the blank. And so here I have made blocked out things and put little dots in for the diagram and students have to fill in which word is missing. 
on a text that we already reviewed. Here is a way to use a chart. So ask students to read a chart and demonstrate their understanding of how to read a chart. And then they can reflect on it after they've demonstrated understanding of the information. Another thing I've been using is blur out for predictions. So this is in the editing tools when you go in to add dots and you can pan to move the image back and forth. That's the little hand and the little circle with the dots in it is blurring out sections of the diagram. So this could be used for predictive text. This could be, um, this could also be fill in the blank if you wanted to do it that way. So students have to pick the correct sentence that goes in there or the correct fact that goes in there or order of events you could use it for as well. Another thing I use it for is questions and context. So students, I will ask them, in this case, I was asking them what different tenses were, but you can do it with a lot of different things. Just asking questions in the context of a text without including the text, using the text instead as a diagram. Now we're gonna talk about, again, there's so many different ways you can use Quizlet. I just wanted to share some of the ways that have been very helpful to me, especially during online learning. Here are some of the ways that students can review on their own using Quizlet, which can be very helpful. They get to choose what kind of assessment style they want to do. Like I said, I feel like Quizlet is the most versatile tool out there for this. I feel like the ability to choose assessment styles is really, really helpful. There's study mode, which is self-paced review, not for time. Many of my students prefer this if they're on their own. It also tracks and shows students what they need to work on. And it's the language around it is very positive and encouraging. And I really like that because some of them are not as encouraging. And so I think for my students, if they get something wrong, it's really nice that they're keeping track of that and then they can get feedback from that. So that's really helpful. The other type of mode is play mode. And so that would be more competitive review. And this could also be for in student engagement. So some students really like online games. I mean, they, they love when the internet goes out and they can play with the little dinosaur with the space bar. So they love doing little games and it's a great way for them to engage. Um, it is a race against the clock, so it's timed. And for live, which we'll get into later after we talk about the other modes, you can do team versus individual mode. and then that was a game changer. I had some students that loved team mode because then they could really be together and talking, but some students who really liked the idea of individual mode and the anonymity of individual mode as they were answering questions. So here are the different assessment types that students can choose from. You can also encourage students to use different assessment types, especially if it's the type of assessment that you'll be giving if you're going to give a more traditional assessment. So we have learn, we have flashcards, we have write, we have spell and test, and then we have match and gravity. And we'll, again, we'll talk about live afterwards. So this is all study, so this is at their own pace. So the first one is learn, and these are the different options for learn. They can give an exact answer, they can give, um, you can give alternatives, you have Greek there, I, you can answer in Greek or English, so I have them mixing and matching. And there are different question types you can choose. You can choose flashcards, you can choose written questions, or multiple choice type questions, depending on what you're going to do. And so here's an example of what I did. I went in, I pretend to be a student for this one and it was really cool and it was nice and it was at my own pace. And I liked how they kept track of everything as I went through it. Flashcards are another option. And this is an option a lot of my students use because they're used to doing more traditional flashcards. And so just clicking to see the term, seeing if they know it um, or trying to, to shuffle, see if, say they've got this, they haven't got it. So it's really interesting. Um, this is tr very traditional, but I like that it's something that they can carry around on their phone and use as an app. It's very easy to access. And it's something that they can take from my account. They can copy it and put it on their own account, or I could send them a link to it. So however they wanna do that. So I think that's really, really powerful. And again, there are options. You can turn audio on and off if, um, I were to make audio, they could use it as well. Um, there could be audio through Closelet depending on what language it is. And so there are a lot of good options. And there's also something coming up, which is a multiple choice option. And so you can have a term and a definition, and then you can add incorrect answers that are similar to the answer. So you can have a multiple choice question for students. This is still in beta, 
but this is coming out and I think this will be something that I will definitely be making for my students, especially for um, different vocabulary because I think it's nice to have other options that might be similar but not 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 out of the blue, but things that would be probable options. And so it would be an effective way to do multiple choice questions. Next, we're gonna talk about write. And so for this, you write the answer. So you get the description and then you write the answer. And I love this. And the reason I want to show this particular slide is because they have a really cool Greek keyboard. And so they do this for multiple languages. And I find that to be very helpful for my students so they don't have to go to an external keyboard and type everything in and then put it in there. And again, some students that would be comfortable doing flashcards might not be as comfortable doing write, but others may think, oh, writing's much easier. And so it just depends on the student and what they will find effective. Or some think, you know what, I really have to work on my writing, so I'm going to choose to do that one instead of flashcards. It just depends. Next is spelling. And so students will spell the word, similar to write. Um, so they'd have to spell it out and they could either, um, they would type it after they see the description. I believe there's also an audio option for this. Yes, so you can type what you hear as well. So it could be either one. And again, here they're lovely for Latin. They have all the macrons for me so that if I were to write a word and I wanted to include the macrons, I could put them in there. And this is great. This can be a version of Dictatio too, if you wanted to use it that way. Then there's the testing option. There are many different sections you can have. You can have a written section, a matching section, a multiple choice section, a true and false section. You can show images from the, slide, the, the, um, the sets and you can choose what you want the answers to be in. So this is an example of what a multiple choice question might look like. This is an example of a written question. Again, you type the answer for this. And because I have it going from Greek to English, that's why it doesn't have the Greek keyboard for this particular one. And then matching questions. Again, this could mimic assignments you're giving in class. It could mimic um, small assessments. You could do true false questions. And then you could do writing, just like we talked about before. Again, this is giving them the Greek alphabet, making that easier and more accessible for them. And so again, the reason why we're, that I wanted to show you all of these is because students learn in different ways. And I think it's really important that they have a lot of options. And I think the fact that Quizlet has so many options for students to learn on their own is very powerful for students. And I think it really helps them. And so you can consider that as you talk to your students. And I think a lot of students might not know about all their options. So it's important to show them and show them exactly what they can do with Quizlet. Next, we're going to be talking about play. And like I said before, play is the more timed option, it's a game type option. And a lot of students are more motivated to do the game type option. Although there are some students that will choose because they either don't wanna be timed or because they wanna kind of go through it gradually and keep track of their progress more gradually, they would rather do the other one. It just depends on what their comfort level is. So for play, we have the gravity game which is really fun. It reminds me of kind of old games from the 90s or you try to get something before something reaches something else. And so it's fun and you have to type your answer in before the thing reaches the thing and it's nice. Um, it's fun. Um, it makes it element of competition. You're competing against yourself, but it's, it's still fun and it, you're under the gun to get it right. And then there's matching, which is dragging the, match, the matches together. And again, this, this is time. So students can do it and they can try to beat their own time. And that's a good way for them to know um, how they're doing. And so can you get it all quickly? And again, if they're into this, if this is something that's really helpful for them. And now um, one of the other things I do is giving feedback. And so one of the kind of app smashes I like to do is Quizlet with Google Slides, because I find that one of the things I end up doing a lot of the time with Google Slides is use it for the curation of materials. So something I might do with my students is have them answer a question on a Google Slide, and then they would choose options. Now, this is something you could also use for choose your own adventure, but what you can do is you can actually turn that answer into a link to another slide. So for example, if they get the answer right, they'll go to one slide, if they don't get the answer right, they'll go to another slide. So I wanna show you what that might look like. So I might ask my students, what year was Julius Caesar assassinated? Click on an option below. So if they were to click on 44 BC, it would send them to this Google slide. Correct, Julius Caesar 
was assassinated in 44 BCE. But if they were to click on this slide, it would take them to this. Sorry, that link, it would take them to this slide and it would say 100 BC, it was the year Julius Caesar was born. For more review about Julius Caesar, see this Quizlet. So I could add to the Google slide either a Quizlet or um, a document or a video or something that would explain a little bit better to my students what exactly it is that was incorrect about their answer. And so that's a good option too. And I find that the element of kind of going through and clicking the different links can make it a kind of fun for them. And again, differentiating construction. Those students have got it, can go through that, and then I'll have more activities for them in the slides at the bottom. But the students that are getting answers wrong have different options. They can go to a Quizlet, they can go to a video, they can go to a document to read. It just depends on the nature of the question and what I'm asking. But it's a great way to use Google Slides and Quizlet for differentiation. And it gives students feedback. They know what they got right, they know what they got wrong, and it gives them the help they need to do better. Another thing I like to do is make Quizlet practice a choice on a choice board. Something I moved to during virtual learning that my students seemed to really like was using choice boards. And so students, for me, I'm a language teacher, so I would give them um, an interpretive task, a presentational task, an interpretive personal task, and then some sort of investigative task. And so all these tasks would be worth 25 and every two weeks they'd have to add up to 100. And one of the tasks I would give them is either to take a Quizlet I had and modify it somehow, or to create their own Quizlet as part of this, or use a Quizlet for practice that I had made as well. And so those are good options for students to practice what they're doing, they have some options for review and things like that. So these are different, um, this is um, an example of a choice board. If you want more examples of what a choice board might look like, please reach out to me. I have the one that's interpretive personal, but this is one of the first ones I did, and I really liked using um, the Quizlet for it. So please let me know if um, you want any of that. I'm happy to share. Another thing that's really fun is to have student created Quizlets. And this can be students creating Quizlets from scratch, or you can create a Quizlet and then have students modify it somehow, like I talked about before. So one of the things students can do is search for sets. And that's really nice because then they don't have to start from scratch. They can look for other sets that are um, good for them and work for what they're doing and copy them to their account. So that's something that's really valuable. With Quizlet Plus, if students get a Quizlet Plus account, they can actually add their own audio to sets. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more and pictures as well. I find that if they can add their own pictures. I think they can use internet pictures if they don't buy it, but if they buy it, they can actually upload their own, which is really nice. Um, for pronunciation, so something that I figured out for my students who have this is that students can take a set that I made. And if they have Google, if they, sorry, if they have Quizlet Plus, they can copy my set and demonstrate their pronunciation skills for feedback. So they can go in and they can record their own audio. And then I can go back into their, they can submit their Quizlet to me, probably either through a link or through Google Classroom, however they want to do it. And then when they submit that link to me, I can listen and I can see how their pronunciation is or how their description is, depending on what I want to do in that task. For vocabulary, students can also copy a vocabulary set from me and demonstrate their understanding by speaking and translating a sentence. So let's say I have a sentence in Latin and I want them to demonstrate their understanding. So I might make a sentence, I might describe what's going on but not translate it and then maybe have them translate, again, using the audio and submit that back to me so that I can give them feedback on how they're doing. For interpretation, so for example, students could copy a text or problem set that I have and then students can read a short section of text as one of the um, sorry, as part of one of the sets. So I could have like one section of text is one, one section of text is the next card and so on and so forth. And then, then um, students can explain it using the audio. So these are all features that require students to use Google Plus, but it's a good option if you, if you can buy it through your school even better. And it's something that's relatively inexpensive. So it's something to think about. And I think it's really good for students to do pronunciation feedback. Also diagrams, so students can copy a diagram set from their teacher and they can describe points in more detail. So all using audio features. 
With Quizlet Plus, again, students can um, use their text enhancements to help their learning. So for some students, it can be really, really helpful to use these different text enhancers. And I really like that the colors are plain, pink, blue, and yellow, because what I've heard from students that are colorblind is those tech, those are actually really good colors for them. And so that's nice, so that it's diff, it stands out to them. Also, you can use bold, italics, and underline. But as always, I would check with your students and see if these kind of different work, are, things are working for them. Also coming up for a, with a system for how you are labeling things. And so if students are marking something, maybe you could have them all mark something particular in yellow, something particular in blue, something particular in pink. Or if they're using it just for themselves and they're not submitting it, you could have them do whatever they'd like to do and whatever works well for them. But again, if you're doing it to have students submit it, I would come up with a system for that. Um, you can also do this with your own Quizlet sets, which is really nice. So if you're going through and you're having students do things in context, as I'll show a little later, you can use this. So Quizlet Live, a lot of us use this. This is something that for my class was such a game changer during virtual learning. I feel like students really wanted to interact with each other and Quizlet Live was a wonderful way to do that. It helped with camaraderie. They were working together and it was so fun for them and they could do it on their phones and they did it in class, but they could also do it together in breakout rooms. And so what I would do is I project the screen in video conferencing and then I would assign the breakout rooms for the different groups <clears throat> and set up their group numbers to correspond with their breakout room numbers so that there was not confusion. And this was easiest for me if I was using two screens. And so I could have be logged into Zoom twice and doing it this way. But I think this would be a really fun option. You could also do this not using breakout rooms, but I found that it was easier for me if I was using breakout rooms with students. Um, something that's fun is, again, what I said, using custom teams and assigning team numbers. And then students would enter that number um, and I, I would correspond it to their breakout room. Another thing is individuals. And I think that students liked this because they could show what they know. And I had some classes that really wanted to do Quizlet Live as teams. And I had other classes who said, no, 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 I want to do it by myself. I want to show what I know. And something I really liked about it was there was very little pressure in some ways because they were anonymous animals. Students felt more comfortable kind of doing it because they were anonymous and they didn't feel like they'd be called up by their peers for however they were doing. And so I think that part was really beneficial. And I think after, at the end, I would say, oh, do you, you want to volunteer who won or whatever? But I think during it, it was really nice that they didn't know because nobody felt uncomfortable. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And something I liked is there's different ways to do question and answer options during Quizlet Live. So you could use definitions as either prompts or terms as answers. That could be a way to do it. Or you could use terms as prompts and definitions and answers. You could use terms as prompts and locations on a diagram as answers, which is something I ended up using a lot. Or you could use definitions as prompts and then locations on a diagram as answers. Again, one that I did a lot. I've been using a lot with using text and like screenshots as my diagram and having students answer questions that way. I found this really effective. Also using pictures and maps, but generally speaking, I've been taking a lot of pictures of text to do it. And Quizlet is a feedback tool. So if you have Quizlet teacher, you can create a class and track student progress. You can see what games they're playing. You can see how they're doing. You could also have students share this as we talked about before, but I think it's really nice to be able to look at class progress and see who's using what tools, what's helpful for them, and kind of gauge what you're doing based on that. I think that's really good feedback for the teacher to see what's working for their class, what might not be working for their class, and where kids might need more help. So that can be really helpful. And so some of the benefits of Quizlet Teacher are, again, tracking student progress, being able to adapt Quizlet Live with custom teams like we talked about, organizing your classes, removing the ads, customizing images and audio, adding the rich text formatting we talked about, creating detailed diagrams with more than eight points, and working faster with the app. So, um, and then as you see their progress, you can recommend sets or create study sets to help students. Another thing I wanted to talk about was reading accessibility support. So one thing I was doing was adding a section of text to each card. Then I was recording myself saying each section aloud. And the purpose of doing that for me 
was that so my students who wanted to listen while I was reading the text, especially in their first or second go around of the text, it was really helpful to, to have me reading the Latin aloud so that as they were reading, they could follow along and they could go do it over and over again, which I wouldn't be able to do necessarily in a one on one class setting. So it's really nice to give them that option when they can go up home and look at that, they can review that. And so you could do this with directions, you could do this with explaining things, you could do this with explaining concepts, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. And again, kind of engaging them with multiple senses, and that will help them to acquire the knowledge. And there's also pre recorded Quizlet audio in multiple languages. And so that's available in the flashcards mode, the write mode, learn mode, and smell mode. So sometimes you don't even have to record the audio because they already have audio options that you can use. Next, I wanted to talk a little bit about visibility support. There were some students that I was having who were having a hard time looking at a computer screen. They were just having a hard time seeing things after a while. It was a lot of computer for them. So one of the things I would do to point out things to students, and this could be helpful for reading accessibility as well, was using those highlight tools. And again, you can see here, um, if I have Latin teachers here, um, you can see I did all pink um, accusatives, I did bolded verbs, I did um, Tarquinius as our nominative in the blue, and Calusinum I have as genitive in the yellow there, I have, um, yeah, I have it italicized and then odd, it's underlined. So you can do a lot of different things with this so that students can see the differences in text. So this would be done for me after I read a text with students to go back and highlight what was important about the text. And again, I have a system that I had already gone through with my students. So they knew exactly why I was highlighting everything. So it's important as you're thinking about this probably to have a system that you wanna go through with your students. And so again, I pointed out the bold italics and underline as well. And pictures, pictures are wonderful and they help acquisition. Cause again, you're engaging more senses, you're reading and then you're seeing a picture to go with it. So you're, you're bringing those two together, which is so nice. So I appreciate that. Um, again, using pictures, there's a lot of different options out there. If you can search the web and add pictures that work for students, it's really fun. And sometimes they can put silly things to help themselves remember. I have some students who put things that are pretty literal for pictures, but others will just copy my vocabulary set and put other pictures that make sense for them. And I think that's important too, to that they have the option that they can copy a set and they can add their own pictures. So that's also a good option. Another thing that some of my students found helpful, and I know I found helpful, is oftentimes after staring at a screen all day, if I was using Quizlet, it was tough to just be staring at the big computer. So what I would do is put it in night mode. And so that was nice, because then you have the dark background with the white lettering, and I find that to be so much easier on the eyes. Um, and so uh, I, that can be really, really helpful too as we're making Quizlets. Another thing that could be very useful is adding alternative text for additional support. So especially if you have a picture, not just writing the definition of what you're trying to get at, but adding alternative text, kind of descriptive text. So if I were talking about this fish, I would say he's orange and um, it lives in the ocean and it likes to swim. And I was just, I would add description of what it is so that if students either for some reason can't see the picture or they're not, um, they don't want to look at the picture right now, they just want to hear the audio that they know what the picture is as well. So you can add alternative text either to read or you can speak alternative text, however you want to do it. Now we're going to talk a little bit about auditory support. So you can use the audio to describe a part of the diagram and you could give hints and give opportunities for growth. So as they're looking at it, if you think someone might be struggling with it, you could offer hints through the description. You could also use, again, the audio to describe the picture as in kind of an alternative text description of a part of a picture. So that might be really helpful as well. Some audio options also include audio by Quizlet, as we talked about before, or audio by the teacher. And it's really simple to record in Quizlet. All you do is say you give it permission and then press the space bar. So it's it's pretty it's pretty easy. Um, I added this here so you can take a look. Uh, it, this gives you very specific instructions. I found it very easy to record, but um, just in case you wanted to review this, you can come back to this. 
let's talk a little bit about some additional accessibility features. So there are keyboard shortcuts and these are great. And if students wanna learn them to do it because they find it easier than searching for doing things. I find Quizlet pretty intuitive, but some of my students really love keyboard shortcuts. So I love that they have keyboard shortcuts in creating sets. They have them in flashcards and they also have them as they're going through the flashcards. So they have one previous next space. So they can use that as well if they don't wanna use their trackpad. So that's some, they can use just their keyboard which I think can be really helpful, especially if they're using an iPad or something like that or any other tablet. Another thing I like is that it accommodates multiple languages. So as students are writing it in, again, they have those features come up where they can have the Greek alphabet come up. They can have the macrons for Latin come up. They can have accent marks come up. So there's a lot of good options there. Again, here is another example of showing how they have a Greek alphabet that you can use. And students can access it anywhere with the app and their browser, and they can access it, on, access it on any device, not just a computer, a tablet, a phone, whatever they have, they can access Quizlet on. Again, accessibility works most the best if students can actually access things. And I think Quizlet is extremely accessible in that way. And the app includes offline study features if the student gets a subscription to Quizlet Go, which is really nice. That means they can download it so they can study or wherever they need to study offline. And again, this could be really helpful if students don't have as reliable internet connection so they can download it on their phone. So when they don't have the internet connection, they can look at their Quizlet sets. And so there's also with Quizlet Go, you can get ad blocking for the app, which is really nice because it's nice to have ad, the ads out of there. So it doesn't have a distracting feature for students. And I know for students that might have um, challenges with reading or anything else, it's really nice to have ads out of the way just to make it easier for them to read. Here are some additional resources well, I found about the effects of Quizlet used as a tool with accessibility. And if you have additional resources, please reach out and I'm happy to add them to this presentation. So um, I want to thank you. I'm going to open up for questions in a second. I see a lot of questions in the question and answer box. But feel free to reach out at latintechtools at gmail.com or on Twitter. Um, thank you so much. And so let's get to some of these questions. Great. And Maureen, I will help you by fielding some of the Q&A questions. And I'm seeing a lot of teachers ask questions in the chat box. If you could actually put it in the Q&A tool, uh, it'll be easier for us to field and find questions. And um, Shout out to you, Maureen. Thank you so much for presenting. And some teachers are commenting you were and are amazing with several exclamation points. Thank um, you. As I'm well as on YouTube, a lot of positive things, Maureen. Great job, Maureen. Very informative and thorough. Um, great job. Very more informative and thorough. So thank, thank you for that, Maureen. So, uh, do you mind stop share? I can't actually see the Q&A. Um, yeah, you can stop. If you want to leave your Twitter up, I can just read the questions and then you can just answer if that works as well. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Sure. Cool. Oh. Ah, now it's moving around. No, go back. There we go. Sure. So first question for you from Leanne Mott is, I would love to see how you set up the map. Ooh, cool. Um, so reach out to me, but what I'll actually do is I upload either a map that I, and then I blur out the names as a diagram, or I take a blank map. A lot of times I look up blank maps and they're freely available on Wikipedia and I'll upload the blank map and then add the, the di different dots to a blank map. Excellent question. Um, I also will sometimes describe where the place is so that students can look around. So they have the, op I'll either give it to them with, okay, here's a place on the map. And then I'll give a little description too. So as they're going through it by themselves, they can look at that. But if I'm doing Quizlet Live, I just do the map and then the place name. Great. And then I'm seeing a bunch of questions um, about different features on Quizlet. You can definitely, teachers, save those for the session later on in the day. Um, let's definitely focus questions specifically on topics that Maureen can uh, answer for us. Uh, Ceci Greco asks, could you please repeat how you do the blur out for predictions feature? Oh, sure. So um, as you're uploading a diagram, there's an option to edit the picture in diagrams. And so as you go into that, you'll see a little pencil thing. So you hit that and then you have the option to pan the image 
You get to wiggle it back and forth if you need to. Or to blur out, it's a circle with dots in it. And then you can drag that along portions of the text to blur it out. I bet you could also do this with a chart. You could, this is, you could also do it with a map. It just depends on what you're doing. But it's a way to add, edit the actual image that you're uploading for diagrams. Excellent question. Right, and then Marie, maybe you can answer this question or this is one that I'll answer. Do you have to program the foreign language alphabet or is there a wide range of alphabets and characters already programmed into Quizlet? There's a wide range of alphabets and characters already programmed into Quizlet. I was so pleasantly surprised the first time I was trying to do um, Latin with it with Macrons, how they just popped up, they knew somehow. And oftentimes when I'm typing in Latin or Greek, it'll just pop up because it knows it. it's Latin and Greek. So it, ha it has something that senses like, oh yeah, you're using this. And so it'll actually change the a language from English to whatever language you start to type in. And the reason I said it for Greek is not because I'm taping with Greek alphabet, but I'll often copy and paste Greek that I have from a text into Quizlet and it will recognize it almost immediately as Greek. So excellent question. And then uh, Marie, another question for you is, I think it, this is anonymous. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was super cool how you did the slides with multiple choice questions. Could you explain a little bit more how you did that and how you use it in your teaching? Sure. So I originally started using it as a choose your own adventure. So what I would do is I would populate a bunch of slides, like 10 slides. And then what I would do is on a slide, I would ask a question. So I'd put text above that's a question text. And then I would put two answers and the answers would both be links. Now, one of the cool features of Google Slides is that you can link to a slide within the slide deck. So what I would do is have each of the answers be a link to another slide in the slide deck. So if the question was on slide one, answer number one might be linked to slide two, answer number two might be linked to slide three. And I have uh, a couple of these to share if you wanna reach out directly, I'm happy to share the, a copy of a document. And so what I started to do after I did Choose Your Own Adventure was especially during online learning, I found that it's really good for differentiated instruction. So if you have students working through a slide deck, they can, ask, they can ask questions through comments. They can do all sorts of things that as they work at their own pace, which I really like. And then they can answer questions and it will either take them to the next section if they answer correctly, or if they need more review, it will say, okay, here, go to this Quizlet to review or go to this YouTube video to look at it or something like that so that students can reinforce what they may not have learned yet. And then they can go back and try again. Great. And then Maureen, could you share a little bit more about how you found and started using ChoiceBoard to support? Sure. Um, I found that students really, they like to take ownership of their learning. And so one of the reasons I started using choice boards was I found that students were much more likely to do a project. They were likely to do a homework assignment if I gave them options and let them choose. Now I tried to make it so that it was equitable for students as they chose things. So at choice board I shared was when they were picking different things for different points. But oftentimes I'll also do the different um, modes of communication. So interpersonal mode, presentational mode, um, interpersonal mode, and then investigative mode. But it just depends on what I'm doing. I'll either use it as I did it often for homework during virtual learning. And I also did it for all of my classes for a final exam. And I gave them multiple choices of what they could choose for that final exam. And I think that because of that, they were way more invested in what they were doing because they had that idea of ownership and choice. Excellent question. Maureen, have you tried have you tried doing this with PowerPoint instead of Google Slides? I have not. I'm I'm a Google certified trainer and a big Google aficionado. I've been using Google for a long, long time. But I bet you could use it through PowerPoint. And if you had a PowerPoint to do this with, I bet you could if you wanted to use Google Slides, you can actually upload a PowerPoint to Google Drive and then convert it to Google Slides if you wanted to do it that way but I bet you could do it that way with PowerPoint. I'm not sure what um, online PowerPoint really looks like because I haven't really used it. I usually use slides, but it's a good question. All right, and then I'm going through the questions for Marine right now. Thank you. Again, some of the features that Marine shared are gonna be covered in future sessions today. Um, be sure to join the benefits of Quiz the Teacher, also our uh, roundtable panel discussion with our product managers today as well.
Um, let's scroll through some of these questions. So a lot of questions about Quizlet Live. Oh, okay. So Maureen, are you comfortable with, and we're asking all presenters, sharing your slides for later access? Oh, sure. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so for all of the teachers asking, what we're going to do is when we record and upload these sessions to the YouTube channel, in the description of the YouTube video and the presentation, there will be a link to access PDF versions of these slides. And if you want to see different versions of how to do Quizlet Live, I actually presented at the sound conference last year and I did a ton of stuff with Quizlet Live. So that already is up on the YouTube channel. So if you want to learn a little bit more about, it's more mostly focused on language teaching, but there's a lot to do with Quizlet Live on there. Right. And then Maureen, we have a little time left. Do you mind showing some of your diagrams and kind of how you've created them? I've seen a lot of questions about your diagrams were so pretty, they're so great. Oh, if you okay. could reshare some of them for people to view. Sure. Let me go back. I can, let's see. Sorry, just don't get seasick on me here. <laughs> let's see. Um, there are some diagrams. Up at the top. There we go. Sorry, I talked myself. Um, here Lord. we go. Okay. So th these are some of the ways I use diagrams. And so what I did for this particular diagram was I uploaded a picture of a Greek statue. Um, it's a statue head. It might be Pericles, I'm not sure. Um, but what I was trying to teach my students was the different parts of, of the Greek face. We were reading a text that had to do with that. And so what I would do is I'd upload the picture and then I would add these dots. And for each dot, students would have both the word in Greek and a description of what there is being looked at there. And so that's something you can do with a picture. That's something you could do with a diagram, just depending on what you wanted to do with that. Um, for this one, I was using, this is from a textbook. So what I did was I took a screenshot of the textbook page. Um, and then I was trying to have students tell me what the function of the different parts of the bathhouse were. And so I put the dots on here and I played Quizlet Live with the students and I tried to do it so that they wouldn't read all the descriptions. And it worked out pretty well um, because they do have the descriptions on there, but it was nice. I did a blank one eventually because I realized that the descriptions are on there, but this one was just, just a prettier picture. And so for this one particularly, what you could use is upload this picture, then use that blur out function that I was talking about to blur out the text, then put the dots on there. So that would have been a better option for this particular diagram is to blur out the text for them and then put on the dots. Now you can have eight dots free. And then if you want more dots, you can, use, if you upgrade to Quizlet Teacher, you can get more. Um, for the map, what I would do here is you can upload a picture of a map and then you can put the dots right on there. And here you can see I use a blur out feature to blur out the names on the map. And so for this, again, you can put the place names or you can put a description of where those places are. Um, and this is how I use it for text. And like I said, I use it for text all the time. This is a screenshot of the Latin library um, online. And so what I was doing is I blurred out, I uploaded it, I blurred out words, and then I had students predict which word went into which place. And for this, I wanted to show that students could read a map. And so that's why I put the dots in here so they could see, okay, this is how to read what the population was. For this one, um, for predictive stuff, again, I blurred out parts and then I put in the different sentences. So students had to predict where each sentence worked within the text, within the con greater context of the text. And finally, for questions and context, um, asking different grammatical questions for the different dots in context. Um, and yep, yeah, that's, those are diagrams for Dow. Um, if you want to see more or you have questions, feel free to reach out. Great. Thank you so much, Maureen. We have a minute left, so I will wrap up there and I will remind everyone that yes, Maureen has agreed to share her slides with us. They will be added to the YouTube video. And when it is uploaded to the Quizlet YouTube channel, teachers will get an email with easy, accessible and findable links to access that. Um, thank you so much, Maureen. You're seeing all the teachers giving you some shout outs and love on both YouTube live and the Zoom chat. 
And um, I look forward to everyone joining us at 1025 PDT, so in five minutes, for Experience, Expectations, and Exploration Virtual Learning with Derek DeBossi from LaGuardia High School in New York, New York. So thank you, teachers, and thank you, Maureen. Take care. And see everyone soon.